The conflict between Palestine and Israel stands as one of the most protracted and complex disputes in modern history. However, understanding the nuances of this conflict goes beyond simplistic narratives of identifying good and bad sides. It involves intricate historical, cultural, and geopolitical factors that have shaped the ongoing tensions in the region. Have you ever wondered how the Israel-Palestine conflict began? To truly understand, we must journey back in time to the late 19th century, a period of rising nationalist movements worldwide and a pivotal moment for the historic land of Palestine. The year was 1882 and the first seeds of the ongoing conflict were being sown. Jewish communities, moved by Zionist aspirations for a homeland and a refuge from widespread anti-Semitism, began to establish settlements in Palestine. Back then, this land was a part of the vast Ottoman Empire, and the Jewish settlers made up about 8% of the population. However, this was only the beginning. Over the next few decades, the Jewish population in Palestine began to grow. It was a time of change, a time of movement. Inspired by the Zionist vision, more and more Jews started migrating to Palestine, seeking a place they could call home. By the year 1931, the Jewish population had grown to 16.9%. And just five years later, in 1936, it had further increased to 28.1%. This growth was propelled by five waves of immigration, each one bringing more Jewish people to the land of Palestine. But as the Jewish population grew, so did the tension. The increasing numbers sparked discontent among the Arab communities who had been living in Palestine for generations. They saw this influx of settlers as an encroachment on their homeland, and the stage was set for a conflict that would span over a century. This growth, however, was not without conflict. As the Jewish population within Palestine grew, so did the tension with Arab communities. The escalating friction led to tragic events that only deepened the divide. And so, the roots of the Israel-Palestine conflict were firmly planted, setting the stage for a struggle that would continue to shape the region and its people for generations to come. The increasing Jewish population and their nationalist aspirations led to escalating tensions. As we journey through the early 20th century, we witness a region in turmoil, a land divided by contrasting visions and dreams. By 1931, the Jewish population in Palestine had grown to nearly 17%, and by 1936, it had risen to slightly over 28%. This increase was propelled by five significant waves of Jewish immigration, a direct response to the harsh anti-Semitism experienced in Europe and Russia. However, this influx was not welcomed by all, and tensions began to rise. A tragic reflection of these rising tensions was the Hebron Massacre of 1929. Jewish residents, who had lived peacefully with their Arab neighbors for generations, were suddenly targeted in a brutal outburst of violence. Sixty-seven Jews were killed and the rest were evacuated, leaving Hebron devoid of a Jewish community that had lived there for centuries. Just a few years later, in 1946, the King David Hotel in Jerusalem was rocked by an explosion. This act of violence was not perpetrated by Arab nationalists, but by a Jewish underground group, the Irgun. They targeted the hotel because it housed the British administrative and military headquarters. Ninety-one people were killed, and the event sent shockwaves around the world. These were not isolated incidents, but rather, they were part of a larger pattern of violence and retaliation that was beginning to define the region. Each act of violence, each loss of life, deepened the divide between the Jewish and Arab communities. The dream of a peaceful coexistence seemed to be slipping away, replaced by fear, mistrust, and resentment. And so the stage was set for the decades of conflict that would follow. A land that was sacred to many was becoming a battleground, a place where dreams of nationhood clashed with realities of opposition and resistance. Each act of violence deepened the divide. The seeds of conflict were sown, and the roots of this enduring struggle were stretching deeper into the heart of Palestine. In 1947, the United Nations proposed a solution, but it was met with rejection. The world had just emerged from the horrors of the Second World War, and the Jewish people, scarred by the Holocaust, sought refuge and a homeland. The United Nations, grappling with this humanitarian crisis, proposed a partition plan. 
This plan aimed to divide the historic land of Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states, with Jerusalem under international administration. However, this proposal was not accepted by everyone. Arab states and Palestinian leaders rejected the plan, arguing that it violated the rights of the majority Arab population in Palestine. Despite the opposition, on May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, declared the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel to be known as the State of Israel. This declaration was a landmark moment in Jewish history. For the first time in 2,000 years, there was a sovereign Jewish nation. The news was met with jubilation by Jews worldwide, many of whom saw Israel as a haven, a place of safety and identity. But for the Palestinians, this moment marked the beginning of what they refer to as the Nakba, or the catastrophe. With the creation of Israel, approximately 700,000 Palestinians were either expelled from their homes or fled during the war that followed Israel's declaration of independence. These displaced Palestinians found themselves in refugee camps in the neighboring Arab countries, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And so, the creation of Israel, while a cause for celebration for some, was a source of profound loss for others. A joyous moment for Jews worldwide, but a Nakba, or catastrophe, for Palestinians. This dichotomy, this shared land marked by contrasting experiences and narratives, forms the heart of the Israel-Palestine conflict, a conflict that continues to shape the region and its people to this day. The proclamation of Israel was followed by a series of wars, the echoes of celebration had barely faded when the young nation found itself under siege. The Arab-Israeli conflict was a series of wars that erupted almost as soon as Israel was declared a state. The first of these wars was the Suez Crisis in 1956. A conflict over control of the Suez Canal led to a brief but intense war, pitting Israel, the United Kingdom, and France against Egypt. Though the conflict ended relatively quickly, it marked a significant shift in the power dynamics of the region. Next came the Six-Day War in 1967, a conflict so swift and decisive it would forever alter the landscape of the Middle East. In just under a week, Israel had captured the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem from Jordan, and the Golan Heights from Syria. This swift expansion of territory brought a significant number of Palestinians under Israeli control, exacerbating tensions that still persist to this day. Then in 1973, on the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, Yom Kippur, Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack against Israel. The Yom Kippur War, also known as the October War, was a bitter and hard-fought conflict, but ultimately, it ended in a stalemate. These wars didn't just redraw the map of the Middle East. They reshaped the future of the region. The outcome of these conflicts left Israel in control of territories that are still the subject of intense debate and conflict. They created refugee crises, hardened divisions, and left wounds that have yet to heal fully. Through it all, the people of this region, both Israelis and Palestinians, have shown remarkable resilience, striving for normalcy amidst the turmoil, holding on to hope for a peaceful resolution. It's a testament to the human spirit, a beacon that continues to shine, even in the darkest hours. The wars reshaped the map and the future of the region. And while the path to peace may be fraught with challenges, the desire for a peaceful coexistence remains a shared aspiration. Decades of negotiations, uprisings, and peace accords have yet to produce a lasting resolution. The situation today is a complex interplay of politics, religion, and identity, making the path to peace elusive. The establishment of Israeli settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem has been a contentious issue. These settlements, considered illegal under international law, have not only altered the demographics, but also the physical landscape, making a two-state solution increasingly difficult to envision. On the other hand, the creation of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO, in 1964 marked a significant milestone in the Palestinian struggle for self-determination. The PLO initially de dedicated to armed struggle, later recognized Israel's right to exist, and committed itself to a peaceful resolution. However, the emergence of Hamas in the late 1980s added another layer of complexity. Hamas, unlike the PLO, has refused to recognize Israel and has often resorted to violence, leading to a deep internal divide among Palestinians. 
These contrasting visions for the land have resulted in a deadlock. On one side, there's a growing Israeli population, many of whom see the West Bank and East Jerusalem as an integral part of their historical and religious homeland. On the other side, there are Palestinians who view these territories as the heartland of their future state. Attempts to bridge these divides have been numerous. The Oslo Accords in the 90s, the Camp David Summit in 2000, and more recently the Abraham Accords have all aimed at fostering peace. Yet each has fallen short in addressing the fundamental issues at the heart of the conflict. Today, the question remains, can there be peace, and if so, how? Can there be a viable two-state solution, or is it time to explore new models of coexistence? These are questions that continue to challenge leaders, diplomats, and citizens alike. As we grapple with these issues, let us remember that at the heart of this conflict are ordinary people, on both sides, whose lives are deeply affected by these political decisions. Their stories, their dreams, and their struggles must not be forgotten in our quest for peace.